one. Uh, it's been a long time since we did one of these, uh, but it is time for another Life Coach Reviews books. And uh, this book I got um, last October, November at the Honolulu International Airport, uh, along with my other book, uh, A Little Life, Circe. I got this book along with the um, A Little Life because I was kind of thinking, okay, so I'm this person who reads books now, right? I got A Little Life because it was a thousand, like, 800 something page book. It was a massive book. And I wanted to see if I could, like, actually read that big of a book. I wanted to see if it, I kind of have it in me. And I was expecting that book to be the challenging book to read. And this book I picked out of um, pleasure, right? Why? Because um, I actually am a big fan of Greek mythology. I, or at least I thought I was. Because um, in Korea, where there's a lot of children's book about Greek mythology. And so I grew up reading those like books with lots of pictures. And so um, it was cool. And uh, I remember when I first visited, when I first got, went to school in Canada, um, I remember that like the school had like a trivia thing. I think it was literature class. And then I was like the person who was the most well-versed in, you know, uh, Greek mythology. So it was kind of like my thing, right? And so um, that's why I... That, that was my kind of previous relationship with Greek mythology. And when I saw this book at the airport, and it's like, hey, like uh, it's number one New York Times bestseller. And it's about Greek mythology. So I was like, oh, and it's like a feminist book. So I'm like, okay, so like there's no reason why I shouldn't read this. It's like a good uh, pleasure book. And then, uh, interestingly, the A Little Life turned to be turned out to be like a real page turner. It, it's a completely miserable book. It was a wild emotional roller coaster filled with um, torment and suffering, but um, it had a very addictive quality to it. So I actually finished uh, A Little Life first. And then after that, I got into a severe like book depression uh, because the, A Little Life is such a traumatic book. Um, I was just kind of turned off to fiction now, right? I'm like, oh, oh man, I can't read fictions anymore because I'm, I need that, like I have a big of a, bit of a hangover. Anyway, that's the context around uh, why this book took such a long time to read. And... To be completely honest with you, this book took a long time to read partly because, in my opinion, the book doesn't really get exciting until the last, like, eight chapters. And I think the book has about, like, 27 chapters. Yeah, it has 27 chapters. So, um, the whole kind of, like, first uh, 19 chapters seem like a large intro. And um, I think if you are more well-versed in Greek mythology than I am, and I turns out I really wasn't. Um, I only knew the context around the gods and like the, what the gods are symbolic of. But what this book revolves around is um, less about the Olympians. It's more about the uh, Titans and the humans around the Titans. So um, the book is less about... Zeus and uh, Hera and like you know Hades and these like grand Olympians it's more about like uh, Helios and Oceanus and the daughter of uh, you know um, Helios and uh, you know like uh, Persephone and all the humans like Odysseus and Daedalus and you know the Minotaur and all these things so that part I wasn't really informed, right? Like I didn't really know the backstory around those, um, you know, like Titans and the humans surrounding them. But apparently this book is a reinterpretation of the lore around uh, the uh, witch Circe. And so because I didn't know the pre-existing version, this, uh, the how this book explained it turned out to be not that fresh to me because it's like, oh, I guess... This is what just happened. And uh, after I completed the book, I read the, like, you know, tr more traditionally um, 
well, well, more publicly around uh, lore around Cersei, and it was like, oh, okay, so this book actually turned out to be a very feminine um, reimagination of what Cersei's life must have been like. But yeah, after around chapter 19, uh, the book picks its pace up, and um, it starts becoming very interesting, at least. But there's a, a lot of, uh, you know, the Greek fates involved, um, you know, like the Oedipal, like, uh, thing, right? Oedipus, you, like, have, you are fated for a life of, like, you know, like, killing your father and, like, you know, um, marrying your mother and then, like, oh, no, I'm gonna do everything I can to avoid this fate and then, you know, like, time passes and then you ultimately end up fulfilling that fate. Um, there's a lot of those in this book as well. So if you like, if you like the um, you know Greek literature and the whole themes around um, Greek mythology, I think this is gonna be a very entertaining book for you. Um, but in the end, was it like a really fun, great book? Was it like the Alchemist to me? Not really. But it's not, I think, um, the book's fault per se. The, it's just my lack of context around uh, the character of Cersei and um, I guess how the story kind of like unfolds itself like how the pace goes from like uh, slow 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 and then at the end just like boom 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 um, that is kind of like uh, why I think this book was so hard to read to finish so um, I would say it's like a if, uh, you know five star system i would give this book uh 2.5 stars it was like a it was a solid like read but it wasn't like exactly that great and um what's my favorite part about the book so this part may be a little bit of a spoiler but um basically cersei is like a witch um she's a nymph and uh but ultimately she uh gets into touch with like the magical qualities uh, herb mixing and then like potion brewing and like you know casting spells and things like that and uh, that's kind of been her fate in her immortal life and now she's looking to transition into kind of a different life so there's a passage that kind of like describes the determination of Cersei for me there was nothing I would go on through the countless millennia while everyone I met ran through my fingers and I was left with only those who were like me, the Olympians and Titans, my sister and brothers, my father. I felt something in me then. It was like the old early days of my spells when the path would open sudden and clear before my feet. All those years I had wrestled and fought. Yet, there was a part of me that had stood still, just as my sister said. I seemed to hear that pale creature in his black depths. Then, child, make another. I did nothing to prepare. If I was not ready now, when would I be? I did not even walk up to the peak. He could come here, upon my yellow sands, and face me where I stood. Father, I said, into the air, I would speak with you. So, uh, the character of Cersei is really just kind of like uh, always living under her father's shadow and is always just kind of at the mercy of other people. But this is kind of the turning point where she's like, you know what? Fuck that. Like, I don't need to live like that anymore. And is it scary as hell still? Like, even when you realize and recognize that you have um, nothing to lose, therefore, like, nobody has any power over you anymore because you only lose power when, there's, when you have something to lose. It's still scary as hell, but, like, now you're able to kind of come to the trading table with nothing to lose. And ultimately, that's what gives you the power, right? And so I thought that was kind of the most um, interesting part of it. Um, how the character's kind of relationship with power changes by uh, recognizing that, oh, yeah, like, huh. Yeah, I didn't have to be like that. 
So, my uh, th that's my favorite passage from this book. And uh, one more last note is that if you are interested in Greek mythology in general, and also if you like playing games, um, something I want to recommend is the video game called Hades. It's another very creative, um, you know, perspective on the, you know, uh, story around Hades and uh, his son. It is, a, uh, yeah, it's a very well-made game and uh, it doesn't require like complex controls. So uh, it has, a, and it has a ton of like replay value and it, uh, disp and it shows, uh, showcases a lot of the characters you're familiar with in the uh, Greek mythology. So. Uh, that's something I want to recommend. And also, if you are into board games, um, there is a board game called... Honey, what's the board game called? The one with the grease? Oh, Santorini. Santorini is a wonderful board game if you are into board games and Greek mythology. And it's uh, best for two players. So... Uh, that's my recommendation and that's my thoughts after reading uh, Madeline Miller's uh, Cersei.